So, context for Ian. Uh, you play, well, we play a character called Aurelie, um, which is the girl in the front. Aura Lee, not Oral. <laughs> and uh, on the right with the brown hair is Kerr, an earth dragon who has been trapped as a human. Uh, on the left is Imari, how do you say it? Uh, a water dragon who has voluntarily come along for the ride. Uh, so Kerr has to complete this mission to get his um, dragon body back. Um, oh blimey, it's a hawk stream! What up my dude? Hey Steve, how you going? And uh, Aurelie is a knight in training and she has agreed to help him complete his journey. That's pretty much all we know, so you haven't missed much. Uh, uh, it's a visual novel, it's very cute. Uh, load. Do I have to press load or do I just press start? Carry on. Nope, that's not what I want. Ew. Trying to press load. Load. How do I select it? There we go. Okay. Whew. Quite difficult to see. Okay. Hey, no, I was reading. Satisfied with my packing, I hurried down this- Whoa, why is it on auto? No, 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 no. Right. See, the problem with my screen is that it's very slightly too small. And I can't quite see. Can I just turn auto off? What the button is to turn it off again. Okay. Right. You gonna stay now? Okay, good. Right, let me move the subtitles and this so you can see. Not that that is the screen. Let's not move the screen. Oh, for fuck's sake! That's not what I wanted. Get off this. Thank you. Right, let's try that again. Satisfied with my packing, I hurried down the stairs. Hot oh, mum. <laughs> Just as mum was rereading the letter of recommendation she'd finished. Ah, Aura. All prepared? I sure am. How's the letter? I... I'd just show it to the Argent... Valère Guild, right? The Argent Valère Guild, I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it, was one of the most prestigious orders in Ishterra. It consisted of knights who served the Sun and Moon Council, but also did non-military work. Uh, Oliver was the central hub for all their activity. Oliver is a city, not a person, for context. Mum had been part of the guild all her life, so her name was well known among the younger generations of knights. Right. As long as a former knight recommends you, it shouldn't be too hard to earn the rank. I've made her English now, I don't know why. Hopefully they didn't change any of the requirements. Hey Kira, welcome! How are you doing? Excited, I snatched up the letter and quickly skimmed the beginning. I, Lady Andrine Bayard, former captain of the guard Tur what? Turcopo Turcopolier? Turcopolier of the third cavalry line of Mom, your titles and credentials are longer than the actual recommendation. But I guess it helps me since I've been trained under you. Sort and very lazy. L lazy, good, fine, sort, not so much. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope you feel less sore very soon. I returned the letter so she could officially seal it, then promptly tucked it into my bag, making sure it wouldn't get crinkled. The lady mer- the, the lady merchant? The merchant ventures carriage should be ready. They already know the escort arrangements and your father is making sure the boys don't get into too much trouble. I'm sure it'll be fine. Anyway, let's get going! You're gonna see your daughter off on her grand adventure after all. I eagerly rushed out the door, not wanting to make the others wait any longer. Wait, Aura! I halted and pivoted, noting the cautious, cautious tone in her voice. Still can't read. Nope. Yes? 
She sighed and folded her arms. Well, originally I was going to cancel this whole arrangement. Why? The merchant was rather vague about the contents he was carrying. I usually like to confirm everything with my own eyes, since it's not just for their safety, but also mine and that of any other escorts. Changing rooms and devices. Excellent. Love that show. I highly doubt the package will contain monsters or anything sinister. Are you sure you're not overreacting? I mean, this is your daughter getting involved. Yes, that could be the only issue with what he's carrying, definitely. He paused and mulled over my suggestion carefully. True. Maybe all my overprotectiveness. This is the first time my daughter will go off on her own, after all. Changing rooms. Lawrence Zewell and Bo Bowen and Carol Smiley. Yep. I used to love that show because when it came on, my mum, I would put my leg over my mum's lap and she would play the theme tune on my leg like it was a piano and it made me fucking howl with laughter. I loved it. My favourite game in the world. She nodded, mostly to herself, and I accepted her agreement. Right! right. Thanks for organising everything! Now come on! As expected, Dad, Kerr, and Ilmari were at the... Ilmari, I don't know, is that what I said before? The big dog and ultimate cutie, shut up! <laughs> we're at the edge of Berry, with the carriage stationary on the main road. It's interesting we don't seem da we don't seem to have a dad character. He's just kind of there in the background bobbing about making stuff. Her was pacing while Ilmari was chatting happily with my dad. The coachman waved to acknowledge us and I approached the open window of the vehicle. A middle-aged man sat amongst the sink silks and pillows which suggested I was protecting a wealthy merchant. Mr. Armand, was it? I'm Orly, and my companions and I will be escorting you to Oliver. I assure you we're trained, and you'll get there unharmed. The others are well-versed in magic. I was pretty confident about that assumption, at least. He nodded, and I was unsure if he was nervous or just reserved. Thank you. Do we set off straight away? Uh, of course. No problem. I glanced down and saw an ornate box. It was long and narrow, and I tried to fathom what was so important that they needed to hire protection. Maybe it was a sword? I wanted to ask about the contents, but decided against it. My priority was getting to Oliver, and the quicker, the better. I made a mental apology to my mother, rationalising she was just worrying over nothing. Alright! Seems everything is ready! We're moving out! I energetically motioned to the others, then exchanged hugs with my parents. I promise I won't be gone for too long. I'll definitely be back in time for the harvest. As we departed, my mum cupped her hands around her mouth. And remember... Be sure to check every barrel, crate, and chest in town. The residents don't mind if you find something useful. Really? I mean, I like th I like that that's a shout out to what people do when they play games. Just go through looting everything in mind. But I love that they've added that into the game. That's so funny. Um, I'm pretty sure that's stealing. Speaking of which, oh that's the dad. What voice did I give him? Did he have a voice? I can't even remember. Teach your companions the concept of pay. We don't want them accidentally pilfering apples or the like. Okay. Oh gosh, that's right. I didn't even think about that. Ilmari glanced at me curiously as we continued walking. Hey? Uh, uh, just... Don't take stuff. Especially if it seems like it belongs to other people. But your mom just said... Don't mind what she said. And Carr, you're too far ahead! Not a professional start. 
Thanks, Kerr. The merchant probably heard that they didn't understand pay either. Thank you, family. We hadn't even left the village and already my mind was swarming with too many worrisome thoughts about the journey. No, just focus on the mission, it'll run smoothly and everything will be fine once we reach Oliver. I reached into the bag and touched the letter for comfort, to make sure it was still there. Feeling my confidence returning, I straightened my back and boldly gazed beyond the road. This watercolour kind of style is so pretty. Finally, my dreams will come to fruition. The journey so far had gone off without a hitch. I, I mean, you've gone four steps, love. So you roll. <laughs> we were passing through a rockier area, with a forest pressing against us on both sides of the road. There was still much greenery, but some trees were already showing the early signs of autumn with yellowed leaves. Ilmari and I... Oh, thank you for the follow, General Fondue. Thank you very much. Welcome in. Ilmari and I were ahead of the two-horse carriage, while Kerr was content with shadowing the vehicle. Uh, feel free to say hi, hang out and chat, but uh, if you don't want to chat, if you just want to listen, that is entirely fine as well. Since history and politics were never my forte, my brain strained to answer Ilmari's endless questions, but I would immediately perk up if they had anything to do with knights. Unfortunately, this wasn't one of those times. I have a question. So, the council, each town has a representative, and they come together in Oliver to help govern? Pretty much. They do things like build bridges, schools, or improve the agriculture. We have a similar system between the wise dragons. They use their knowledge of the past to help shape our future. Hey, Maury, have you been picking up activity for the past hour or so? Ilmari, and yes, I have, but I wasn't sure if it should be brought up at all. Ooh, that headdress. Do you mean the things over their ears? Because they are actually their ears. They're not headdresses, they're actual ears. Um, sorry, you probably need context as well. Um, Kerr, on the right with the brown hair, is an earth dragon who is trapped in the form in a human form. Uh, so this whole game is like our mission to get him back to being a dragon. Um, but yeah, there is actual ears. And Elmari on the left there in blue is a water dragon. Oh, <laughs> yes, hello, I am without clue. Uh, so yes, and uh, Aurelie is a knight in training. So Aurelie is actually human, or a heaven kind, just they're calling this game. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all the context you need. If you have any questions though, please, you know, obviously, pop them in chat and I'll do my best to answer. Dragon Kara, yes. Her is very much Dragon Kara. I should send her a clip and be like, look, it's you. <laughs> Apart from the fact that he's an earth dragon, she would hate that. I paused and touched my hilt, but let my hand drop, lest it would reveal I suspected something. Activity? Are we being followed? The two exchanged glances, with Ilmari appearing more apologetic than Kerr. I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry I, I should have said something. I wish I had your hearing abilities, but still, I feel so inattentive. I surveyed the forest, noting any jutting cliff sides. If we were to be ambushed... How many? I don't know. Five or six? Do you think these followers have a malicious agenda? I didn't think Heavenkind would be the hostile type. Well, I wish I could say everything was peaceful, but disputes and fights still arise. I mean, obviously, otherwise why would this guy need protection? You fool. There's always exceptions. Dragon kind are generally harmonious, but clashes still occur. Especially when dominant young males are expanding their territories, and they happen to overlap, it can get quite intense and scary. Not speaking from experience or anything. Of course not. I never assumed. Bah. Weak. Wait. 
That's a very Kara expression as well, isn't it? <laughs> he stared hard at Ilmari, and then his eyes widened in recognition. Hey, finally! We have met! Kerr let out a boisterous laugh, clearly amused by the whole situation. Sorry about that. Territorial instinct. That lake had a nice beach. Oh, Ilmari. Um... I stepped between them before any more tension could arise. Can we save the border debate for another time? Right now we have to focus on the people pursuing us. I wish you'd told me sooner, but at least now we can anticipate any attacks. Let's keep it from the coachman and our client. We'll feign ignorance in the meantime and hope nothing bad will come out of this. I'd rather avoid a battle if possible. Realizing we'd been standing around, we quickly resumed our march. As I adjusted the bag strap over my shoulder, I tried to glance discreetly into the woods. Her, Omari, what is your fighting experience? You could probably take them out in dragon form. Ugh, this body. Ilmari shook his head resolutely. I'm not doing anything like that. Moreover, I'm a Urius. I wouldn't do well on land. I know some magic, so it can be a good support. I nodded, then looked at Kerr expectantly. Bring it. I'll be fine fighting directly. At least we can- you can walk without any problems. <laughs> and I have my sword, along with some focusing techniques. At least we were balanced enough. My focusing techniques would help me fight in optimal condition. Ilmari's ears perked up, and he shifted nervously while Kerr grit his teeth. They're moving swiftly. Probably planning to launch an assault once we advance a little farther. I think they're positioning themselves by that outcrop. When we get there... He trailed off, and I made a fist, biting my lip anxiously. Alright. They think they have the element of surprise? Prepare yourselves. Sounds like there's more than five now. I feel my stomach lurch as we neared the destination, and I already had my hand on my sword hilt. Calm down. Calm down. The knight wouldn't be afraid. I gulped and then chided myself mentally, shaking those thoughts from my head. I reminded myself that I was not a coward. I mentally concentrated on a spell that helped refresh and restore some vigour to my body, but increased my strength temporarily. Once the outcrop loomed over us, there was a moment of uneasy stillness before a swift wind swept through the trees. Okay. Yeah! <laughs> it's my best anime sounds. Yeah! Hey, yeah! <laughs> what? A muscle-bound man landed directly on top of the carriage, shaking it violently and causing the horses to rear up. The coachman tried to settle them down as the attacker leapt off the vehicle, unsheathing his sword. I dashed over and directed his attention to me before he could rip off the door. Our weapons clashed and I clenched my teeth as I successfully pushed him away from the carriage. I could hear the scuffling of feet as more men emerged from the forest. My heart plummeted. We were outnumbered nearly three to one. I recognise that music, do you? Not only that, all of the attackers seemed too organised to be a mere bandit group. My opponent's sword fighting was refined, and their outfits too proper. Not to mention that they had followed us for some time, according to Kerr and Elmari. Take that! 
I dodged one of his slashes and knocked him out with the blunt side of my sword. I did not want to resort to taking a life if I could help it. I saw Kerr lunge forward and perform an awkward curled slap to one of the guy's faces, like he was in a cat fight. What's a curled slap? Is a curled slap just a punch? It looked painful, but it was not an effective strategy. Ah. Uh, claws. He's used to battling with claws. Of course. I tried to approach Kerr, but was stopped by another foe. I parried just in time, but could feel the axe whistling past my arm. Kerr! Punch them! Make a fist! What? The axeman swung again. I ducked and then charged forward, bringing up my left hand. Like this! My fist contacted my opponent's cheek, causing him to stumble back. Pain shot through my arm, and it took all my effort not to drop my sword and cradle my poor hand. I'm 99% sure it's from town of Salem. Huh. Oh, interesting. Like that! Right. Kerr delivered a hardy punch. This time it sent his opponent flying. He glanced at his fist in bafflement, and a smirk appeared on his lips. Not bad. I could get used to this. Ooh. As Kerr jumped into the fray, I could hear Ilmari apologising loudly. A burst of water streamed forth from his hands, toppling someone who tried to run up to him. Take this. Four down, four to go! A few men that had gotten back up were now second-guessing themselves, while the more stubborn ones tried a round two. I, as I was engaged in another sword fight, I stepped back and felt my shoulders bump into someone. I glanced up in the heat of battle and spotted Kerr, who looked down at me. The heat of battle? That reminded me. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Yeah, so apparently everyone's naked and the clothes are just spells. But for context to this, I don't know why. <laughs> but let's just go with it. Because dragons are naked all the time, I suppose. Hey, Franz! Hey, no angel! I assure you the spell won't wear off in my clothes. Just that I don't want to glance back during, I don't know, the heat of battle and catch you stark naked. Dragon dong time! <laughs> <laughs> Before we could stop ourselves, we burst out laughing, causing the challengers surrounding us to look per perplexed, possibly even alarmed or scared. Why are you two laughing? Help me! Elmari retreated to the other side of the carriage as he struggled to conjure a spell. Her, still chuckling, knocked another man out and darted around the carriage while I was locked with the second to last with the second to last foe standing. Yeah. I reposted, but he blocked my sword. I retaliated with a swift kick to the stomach and he stumbled back. His eyes darted over his fallen comrades as he slowly backed away. I pointed my sword at him, and he hastily disappeared into the forest, leaving his partners behind. Wow. Perfect timing, since I could feel my focus spell wear off. Howard. Ooh. A high-pitched scream came from the carriage, and I turned to see the door to see that the door was open. One of the armed men was escaping with the box. No! Not while I'm around. I was gonna say, isn't Kerr like super fast though? Also that. He slammed the ground with his fist, causing the whole place to shake. I knelt down, covering my head as my sword clattered harmlessly into the soil. My knees felt like they'd liquefied, and I had to use one hand to support myself. I couldn't move, and each shock only reinforced my terror. Stop. 
Her, cease this at once. D did Omari notice I was scared? The man tripped from the jolts and the box flew out of his grip. It hit the rocky terrain with a crash, causing the latch to open. I forced myself to stand up, but I was unnerved from the tremors. Every step felt wobbly. Look at all the kisses in chat. You're all adorable. Her focused on the almost thief, who also disappeared into the woods. By the time I got to the fallen objects, Ilmari was already scooping the items back into their coffer. I saw a few feathers sticking out. Perplexed by the wares, I reached out for the box, but Ilmari slammed it shut, his face pale white. You're also adorable, Hawk. No! And big scary. Rawr. Ilmari? Phew! Closed it. It uh, would have been unfortunate if it got damaged. It was intact? Of course. Yes. Yeah. Nothing appears broken. He gave me a strained smile. Kerr chased off the remaining conscious opponents, and I carefully stepped around the supine ones. A few groans were emitted, but they probably wouldn't be up for a while. Ilmari handed the box to me, as if he was eager to get rid of it. Thanks, I'll return it. I'll return this to Mr. Armand. I hastily approached the vehicle and placed the box on the seat. The frightened merchant glan glanced up warily. We chased them off, whoever they were. He clutched the coffer, cradling it on his lap. Did you see what was inside? Uh, no, but I'm sure the contents are safe. I closed the door and promptly asked the coachman to resume driving. I sheathed my sword, then rubbed my throbbing left hand, regretting my rash display before. Then again, it wasn't like I'd had the time to explain a punch. Kara had caught on pretty quickly. As we walked, I could feel the adrenaline rush leave me and fatigue creak up, creep up. I didn't think I'd do something like that so soon. I looked up to gauge the boys' expressions, to see how they were faring. Kerr was positively beaming, every strut screamed of his triumph. Ilmari had become oddly quiet, and he appeared lost in thought. Uh, let's check on Ilmari, I guess? I, I don't know, because I feel like... Is this dialogue a bit horny? I mean, it's about shagging dragons. I mean, <laughs> Kerr's obviously okay, but Ilmari's worried. But at the same time, I don't think we're going to get any information out of Ilmari because I don't think he's going to talk about what's in the box. So I guess it's more down to which one we want to romance. Does anyone have a preference? My instinct is to check on Ilmari because he's seems lost in thought, and also because he didn't want to fight in the first place, bless him. Um, but I don't mind if somebody else has any particular feelings towards one or the other. Protect the baby. Okay. Imagine. I assume that's meant to say Ilmari, but yeah. <laughs> Autocorrect is the worst. Ilmari was still ruminating, and I paused until he caught up. Are you okay? You haven't looked so well after that fight. Is it not something you're used to? He gave a weak smile, but averted his eyes. Ooh, thank you for the look, TJ. What's for dinner? It's not that, um... He fidgeted and rubbed his upper arm as he contemplated something. You can talk to me, if you want to. It's just... Orly, do you know what that merchant is carrying with him? No. Kind of the whole point. Burritos. Ooh, nice. Um, no, I don't. 
Admit I should have asked, but I was too focused on getting to Oliver. So you don't know? No. The dark cloud of ambivalence that seemed to cling to him vanished instantly, and he sighed in relief. Ah, I see. Elmari, what is it? And don't say it's nothing. When people say it's nothing, that usually means it's something. I looked at him beseechingly, and he squirmed under my stare. I could tell he was wrestling with his answer. You're right. There is something nagging at me, but I don't want to be jumping to conclusions at this point. Okay. Can, can I think about it and tell you later? I don't want to hide things, but... I don't want to openly speculate unless I'm certain about something. I I is that acceptable? I pondered for a moment. It is. Thank you for not being completely evasive. But I do want to be told eventually. Should I demand to see what's inside the box? Shook his head. Let's just... Focus on the task at hand. Ah, uh, you're right. You were ordered to supervise Kurt. We shouldn't sidetrack. He clearly wasn't. You are an idiot for believing that. Then let's get this carriage safely to Oliver and get paid. Because Kerwin already assumed, for those of you who weren't here yesterday, that Ilmari was, like, sent to look after Kerr or keep an eye on him. But he was just properly like, uh, uh, yeah, sure, said, uh-huh. <laughs> like, obviously he wasn't, come on. He beamed proudly. Hey, money that is given for goods received, services provided, or work done. Can you sure pick this up quickly? For a while I was worried. I promise I won't be trouble. I want to be useful. Thanks, Elmari. I leaned in and lowered my voice to a whisper. There's no one else following us now, right? We're safe. I'll be sure to tell you from now on if I hear something out of the ordinary. Phew! Then onward it is! In a few days, we would arrive in Oliver. I adjusted my bag and thought about the letter, eager to reach the guild. I want to be a knight! <laughs> I don't know why, but for some reason I read that in like a proper Yorkshire voice. Halt! State your business, you know. <laughs> Cargo delivery from Merchant Ventures. I half expected some questioning. The name seemed to carry enough weight that the guard simply nodded and ordered the gate to be raised. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it, Ray. While that was happening, I approached the client, who gave me a small pouch of coins. The guard is played by Sean Bean. <laughs> well, no, because we're walking past him and he hasn't died. As per our agreement. I grinned and accepted the payment, resisting the urge to check. Was it rude if you counted the money if you in front of your client? I mean, maybe, but also, like check that you've been paid? I don't care if it's rude. The heaviness seemed appropriate as my fingers gripped the bag. He'll die in the sequel. Ah, yes, of course. Thank you, and I'm sh glad you arrived safely. Take care. Wow. As the carriage rolled away, I noticed that Kerr and Omari were standing around gawking at the thick city walls. <laughs> well... Shall we get going? They broke out of their trance. Ilmari's eyes shone radiantly while Kerr tried to hide his stupefi stupefaction. Is that how you say it? I always thought it was like stupefaction. Not that it's a word I really think about that often, to be honest with you. <laughs> Please try to stay with me. No wandering off. I tucked the pouch into my belt, and they quietly followed, soaking in the sights as we entered the city. I'm getting Pokemon vibes again.
He should be trying to hide it. You get arrested for showing your stupefaction in public. <laughs> Stupefaction even. Ah! At first, we strolled easily through the wide streets, which had many carts and carriages passing by. Eventually, the crowds thickened, forcing us to slow down. I could see the two dragons getting a few curious stares, but everyone seemed to be too busy with their own schedules to pay real attention. No, those were no more than passing glances. If it was more unusual, I'm sure people would have stopped and commented. It was then I spotted one person with ears similar to Kerr's. It was true that there were more dragon kind here. At the plaza, there was a large platform with carnival feats on display. A fire eater launched a flame, and the crowd awed and applauded accordingly. Wait, I didn't know Heavenkind could breathe fire. Heavenkind, for anyone who missed my explanation, is just humans. Dragonkind, obviously dragons. Uh, Heavenkind is humans. Uh, although, clearly, they seem to be able to do magic as well. And there's also two different kinds of humans, the sun people and the moon people. Uh, they get powers from the sun or the moon, depending on which one they are. And the moon folk seem to have pointed ears, but we haven't actually met any yet to, to see that, so I don't know. What is this trickery? How does this work? Can anyone learn it? Um, it's, uh, an illusion? It only appears like that because he extinguishes it at the right time. Come on, this way. As we zigzagged, Ilmari abruptly stopped, and I nearly bumped into him. I Ilmari? Wow. He had found a glass <laughs> Ilmari really likes windows. <laughs> he had found a glass blowing shop with an open front, and one of the artists was molding a transparent blue bubble with through a blue blow tube. Suspended all around the store were glass blown ornaments. Below, rainbow vases sparkled in the sun. Ilmari gasped in wonderment. That is so that's... that's phenomenal! How are they able to create something so beautiful? There's so many colours! Rainbow vases sparkling is a mood. <laughs> took a step forward, but I quickly pulled on his braid. Don't pull his hair! Then on Kerr's hair, because he was dawdling toward a pastry shop. <laughs> we'll never get to the Argent Valer Guild at this rate, come on! But I want to see! They have apple tarts! We can check the glass shop later, and Kerr, you'll get cavities if you keep eating those. Enough dilly-dallying! We have somewhere to go, and I want to get there now. I released them both after they promised that they wouldn't run off, and made sure they stayed close. Fortunately, the guild was located in a quieter part of town, between the church and public gardens. Kyle looked quizzically up at the headquarters, which proudly displayed an embossed sign. This doesn't look like an altar. Sorry, sorry, this is just a small side trip. Promise. The game's slyly hinting to leash you dragon boys, right? <laughs> I clapped my hands together and gave a little bow, closing one eye. Something I really need to do first. I'd love to have you I'd love to have you come in with me, but they probably don't allow just anyone. So can you two please not wander off? I'll treat you to all the glass shops and apple tarts you want after. I promise. Fine. I sighed, but was relieved that at least one of them was obedient. Besides, even if there are dragon kind here, you might attract too much attention. And I won't be there to protect you if something bad happens. I mean, Kerr can literally m cause earthquakes with his fists, so I think we're good, but okay. Don't worry about us, we'll be over there. 
pointed to the garden, which consisted of shady trees and benches scattered around pretty flower beds. Thank you! I fished out the letter and eagerly entered the building. Inside, everything seemed more normal than I had anticipated. It reminded me of the lobby of an inn or shop. <laughs> Hashtag free dragon boys. <laughs> There was a large board with various scribbled reports pinned to the cork. A few knights with authentic-looking badges walked by, giving me only a passing glance. I approached who I assumed was the receptionist. Um, this is the Argent Valer headquarters, right? Right! I have a letter advocating me for the title of knight. Do you simply join if you fulfill some requirements, or how does this work? First, what academy did you graduate from? Um, I was homeschooled? She shook her head, and I started to get anxious. I pushed the letter onto the counter. At least read this, Lady Bayard. Lady Bayard? Uh, yes, I'm her daughter. She personally trained me so I could officially join the Knights and serve under the Sun and Moon Council. Ripped open the letter and read it eagerly, like it was addressed to a fan from an admired celebrity. Her eyes darted down, and she looked up with a peculiar expression. Her credentials and titles are longer than... I know. You must have lots of potential if you're Bayard's daughter. Sadly, we no longer accept people who merely trained under one person. What? No. Flashed an apologetic smile. I'm sorry, so sorry, but rules are rules, and as much as I admire your mother, new protocols have been recently implemented and they are to be followed. If you want, I could look for openings in the Oliver Knight Academy. Her voice droned on, but I could no longer register anything. I could only stand there, numbly, and nod. All my training? And nothing? That can't be. Are you okay? Orly? Are you okay? I was not sure what had happened, but I had somehow managed to make my way to one of the benches outside. Oh no! I was curled up with my head nestled in my knees, not responding to any of Ilmari's pleas. He's so panicked! Nanny! So my ankle gave out on my way to the station, so I'm running later than normal. Oh no, are you okay? Get an Uber if you need to, okay baby? So, did it work out? Really? I'm sure that should be spelled Orly. <laughs> oh, really? Hello! What? I'm just asking if it worked out. Obviously not! Embarrassed and eyes teary, I glanced up to see what the other two were doing. Ilmari was hovering around me fretfully, like he was trying to figure out how to shoo a spider out of the kitchen. Her, on the other hand, gave me a stern look that said he'd relegated me to the status of dirt under his shoe. And I didn't care. It, it's over. All over. What does one do to reassure a heaven kind? Ooh, lost the accent there, never mind. <laughs> he panicked so much he became British. Isn't that what happened to all of us? I used to be French. <laughs> I tilted over, letting my curled body rest against the bench.
They usually take him or her out to the pub so they can drown in their sorrows. What's a pub? Is it a type of lake? I don't want anyone to drown. My chest and shoulders shuddered from the half hiccup sob and a laugh. Oh, those two. I sat up and wiped my eyes. I I'm fine. It'll take a while to recover, that's all. As long as you can take me to the next altar, I'm good. I scowled and shot up, staring him in the eye. That's a very Kara expression as well, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry for everyone who hasn't met Kara, but Rupert will understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I wanted to become a knight so I'd be able to help you better. I still have no idea what those are, and I don't care. Don't care? You've already delayed us enough with your fiasco. Yes, much, Kara. <laughs> and you're the one who kept telling us not to wander off. Hey, rocks for brains. A precious little girl's dreams just sort of shattered into a million pieces here. Excuse me if I don't feel like... Um... Guiding you to the next altar right now. Ugh, this is pathetic. I bet I could find someone else who, better who would be. Uh. Sings I'm with a snack. Ooh, what you got? More willing to. Stop. Quiet, both of you. There was a ferocious snarl at the end of Ilmari's sentence, and both of us immediately stopped arguing. Food or person? Nice. Both, hopefully. Ooh, pasta. I blinked blankly as I sat down, back down on the bench, surprised that Ilmari could express such ire if he desired. Blair vanished, and soon he was his usual calm self, but with a considerate yet stern edge to his voice. Not meeting Xena till seven. Ayy. Then it'll be snack time. This obviously isn't getting us anywhere. Orally, I know this meant a lot to you, but we also can't forget the original reason for being here. Her, ease off. Let's not fight, especially when we'll be working together to get your form back. He softened and leaned in so he's eye level with me. Orally, you can still help. Night or not? It's only a title, right? You've already done so much for us. We're like a knight already. For some reason, that caused me to smile, and I chuckled lightly at his attempt to cheer me up. Yeah. Yeah. I can still help. I stood back up. <laughs> you can be cool sometimes, Elmari. And mature. He pouted and folded his arms. I'm pretty sure I'm the oldest one here. Her and I exchanged surprised glances, since I had definitely pegged Ilmari as the baby of the group. Do we both feel like we can talk in an amicable manner again? I nodded. After a moment's hesitation, Kerr shrugged, but, I, but didn't fight back. Oh, I forgot the letter, although I don't see the point in going back for it now. Maybe I should have just listened to the alternatives. It wasn't like I was getting completely rejected. My fault for relying too much on my mom's name anyway. At that moment, someone ran up to us, clutching the letter, carried an air of formality, and I instantly recognized his uniform rank as captain of the guard. I gaped, but quickly regained my composure. Excuse me, but is this your letter? I merely nodded. 
Yes. How did you know? When I asked the receptionist about this, she said the young lady took it rather hard when she didn't get accepted. Although I could not see Ilmari and Kerr's reactions, I had a feeling they were promptly agreeing with that remark. Did he witness the bench scene from earlier? Being reminded of my re rejection was enough to get me on the verge of tears, but I nodded again and tried to regain some dignity. Uh, yes, I I'm sorry for not knowing about the new regulations and... He shook his head. Well, you might want an entree before the main course. That's why I'm only having a small bowl. A. I I was never a stickler for those... Wait, what accent did I give him? I've forgotten already. <laughs> Y'all ain't talking about food anymore, are you? <laughs> I was never a stickler for those changes. I find them too limiting. Like back in my day, he trailed off and coughed. However, can't just knight anyone. If you possess the same skill and potential as a student of the Anol Oliver Knight Academy, I can possibly make an exception here. I felt my heart stop as I tried to prevent a paroxysm of squealing. However, your Lady Bayard's daughter, I'm not going easy on you. You'll still need to take a test and I'm pressed for time. Would you prefer a test of sword skills or a written exec- Sword, sword, sword! He glanced at me in bafflement, but smiled. Just like your mother. I worked under her for years. If she knew about the new guidelines, she'd probably be livid. He gestured back to the headquarters. Then, if you're ready... Captain Sean Bean of the Guard. I know, I don't know why I made all the guards from Yorkshire, but, you know, we'll just deal with it. I glanced back at Ilmari and Kerr, resisting the urge to jump. I'll be back soon! Please wait here. Right. Well, that was a serendipitous event. Well, that was a serendipitous event. Wrong voice. I'm glad things worked out in the end. Oh no, does that mean he's doomed to die like Sean Bean in every casted role? I've seen one thing, I think, where he doesn't die. but I can't remember what it was called. <laughs> Are you kidding? Everyone entering and exiting the building saw her embarrassing display. I'm not surprised someone decided to see why there was a girl dissolving into the bench from all her tears. She didn't die in Jim Henson's The Storyteller. Ah, two things then. One track mind, that girl. That <laughs> says you. <laughs> Same as you. <coughs> I have no idea if Sharp dies on screen. Oh yay! He gets to live! <laughs> yeah, there was a, like a, a thriller kind of movie I saw. Silent Hill he lives, but he dies in the sequel. Or maybe dies in the sequel? Yeah, he does die in the sequel. Spoilers! He was briefly in Mirror Mirror and survived that. <laughs> you know what I said earlier? Yeah, that's exactly what I thought you were referencing, Kira. Uh, there's like a thriller movie where he's like a cop or something and there's like a little girl there's something about a mirror image or something like she writes things backwards or something I saw this a long time ago and I'm pretty sure he ends up like in a massive trench and you think he's gonna die but he does survive oh is he in the Martian I've never seen the Martian the whole way through I put it on but I really wasn't in it like I think I was really ill when I watched it so I got like halfway through and I was like nope bedtime Anyway, I hope she comes back soon, though. They promised to take me to that glittering shop. What's a cavity, anyway? He makes a lot of the rings joke, does he? Amazing, what is it? Is it one does not simply travel to Mars or something? By the way, Ilmari... Ilmari! Finally got his name right! No, it's much better than that. Excellent! What is it? What is it? That's what I said. Uh, 
you're right. About earlier, you thought rather competently. That surprised me. Never thought my spells would come in handy that way. I I'm glad it worked out. Why did you and Orly burst out laughing anyway? I admit it was a rather interesting scare tactic, but I don't think that was its intention. <laughs> it was nothing. I'm curious. Nothing important. Oh, okay. Hey, you two! Did it work out? I mustered a small smile and rubbed the back of my head. So there's a top secret NASA project to rescue Matt Damon with a secret group of secret science people. It's called Project Elrond. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe not as I'd like, but not all was lost. Basically, he was impressed, but he can't give me the rank without more proof. Why is it called Project Elrond? Because it's a secret council! <laughs> Amazing. I'll be helping out at the Argent Valer Guild as a knight in training. I can do quests and little tasks, but I can't be included in any major orders. They said to compare it to the final year at their academy. I didn't exactly get that comment, as I'd never been enrolled before, but I guess that meant I could consider myself close to graduating. Explaining the situation solidified some of my confidence, and now I was grinning. I even got a little badge! Well, that is the important thing. Oh! <laughs> Ilmari clapped while Kerr's mouth tugged very slightly at the corner. So, we can go to the next altar? Yes, Kerr. However, it's getting late, so things will have to be postponed. But I still intend to keep my promise. I'll take you to the altar first thing in the morning, and then I'll show you the marketplace. I thought we didn't know where the altar was. I'm happy with that arrangement. That works. Like, I thought the whole point of coming to Oliver was to ask people where the next altar was, because we don't know. Hmm. Oh, and I even get my own lodging, like a real knight. But I can't let unauthorized people in with me. Um, I could find an inn for you both and... An inn? Where you can sleep indoors for a price. Ah, we'd pay them. No, we'll be fine outside. Her? I'd rather sleep outside anyway. Right, it's autumn now, but it's still pretty warm. However, please tell me when it's starting to get too cold to remain outside at night. Then I can arrange an inn. Not sure where you'd go currently. The gardens seem nice, so you could easily get some sleep there. Just don't get into trouble when I'm not around. Ilmari chuckled. <laughs> like a mother. Our cultures may be different, but we do have common sense. His gaze briefly flickered to Kerr, as if second-guessing himself. I'll be watching over him anyway. What's that supposed to mean? I went to the lodge with the others as directed, and was pointed to the second floor where I would be staying. It was essentially like an inn. Female knights temporarily staying in Oliver live here. Oh, sleepy Melly. While they remain here, they can do various tasks around the city for money or little rewards. Think of it as training for all the virtues a knight should represent. They will be honorable and righteous, both on the battlefield and while protecting civilians. And of course, you'll help me. You two will be able to learn everything about Heavenkind without it getting too boring. If I didn't become a knight in training, We'd probably just wander aimlessly, hoping for something to do, and I don't think Kerr's master would accept that as a meaningful experience. <laughs> no! Sleep! 
Still awkward! <laughs> no, please don't nap on the tube. Makes sense. Is this title really that important? Yes! Kerr opened his mouth to interject, but seemed to have thought better about it. Rubbed his temples and exhaled loudly. Try to include something more battle-oriented. I don't know if fighting over other heavenkind would count as an ideal experience. <laughs> but nap-nap, you may nap when you get home. Not until then. Need to make sure you don't go wandering off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what I can do. For now, let's get to that altar tomorrow and see the marketplace as well. The marketplace, I can't say ours. I'm exhausted. So much happened today. Of course. I I'll see you in the morning. Thanks. Don't oversleep, Kerr. <laughs> At least I won't be poked with a stick. But my shoes! <laughs> You've got your shoes! As Elmari headed for the garden, Kerr took a step, then paused before glancing back. Look. Um... Is this one of your reluctantly admitting something confessions again? It's not. Fine, it is. It's okay, Kerr. It shows I'm understanding you better. Is it about the fight? Not those shoes. <laughs> I very much enjoyed Mel's sleepy adventures. Remind me to send you- I recorded a little bit of it. Remind me to send you the recording, because it's so funny. <laughs> Unless I already did, but I don't think I did. Yes, I might have acted a little harshly with you when you were obviously feeling down. Oh, that fight? I thought that meant like a physical fight. Like the one in the woods. That fight. Right, right, right. It's okay. I guess my reaction was a little... immature. I'm surprised you didn't leave me there. Believe me, the thought crossed my mind, but... Ilmari wouldn't have approved. Well... I'm sorry for snapping at you. We do seem to rile each other up. I'll try to be a better, better friend to you. Friend? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've already been through so much together. I consider both you and Ilmari friends. My words seem to have startled him. Oh no, he blush! Awkwardly mumbled a goodbye and departed. Guess that notion never occurred to him. Well, Orly, you're a knight in training now. Time to start acting like one. Jumping up, I entered the lodge, eager for the next day and the adventures it would bring. Right, I'm going to leave it there, I think, for today. Good place to stop off. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I'm getting into this story. Like, it's there's not a lot to do gameplay-wise, obviously, because it's a visual novel, but I'm okay with that, actually. And I like the opportunity to, like, read and do voices and stuff. It, you know, it feels like I'm keeping my toe in, practicing um, accents and voice acting and stuff like that. So that's nice. Ooh, Kate's playing Kingdoms, Kingdoms of Amalur. I haven't played that in years. That's a lot of fun, that game. It's one of the only games I've seen where you get to use a um, chakram as well as a weapon. I was running around feeling like Xena the whole time I was playing. That was fun. Uh, little percents on... Canadians on... I think we should go see Kate. I haven't. We haven't raided Kate in a while. Um, 
You are very welcome, everyone. Thank you, as always, for hanging out with me. I had a really nice time. Uh, tomorrow I'll be back with another Steam Key. Uh, I've, I've got a lot this week. Well, Steam Key. Game Key. I don't know why I say Steam all the time. Um, I got a, quite a few over the weekend, so I'm trying to plow through those. But it's really nice to, you know, experience all these different kind of games. So, thank you, as always, everyone, for watching. Thank you so much for the resubs. Uh, thank you, Merwin, for the subscription. Um, thank you, General Fondu, for the follow. Thank you, Ian Streams, for the raid. You are all wonderful people, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!